Hello, this is Rob Rufus, and this is a Rufus Talk once again. The last time we spoke, we spoke about the, Paul saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile, and is by faith to faith to faith. And I spoke about the miraculous power of God that flows from the gospel. And uh, I'm going to talk today about miracle momentum. Now, I want you to just, I'm, I'm in my study in Hong Kong, and uh, it's very, very super untidy. It's a little bit like my brain works. I don't know if you can see all the books all piled up on the table and all the scrap, scrappy work there. And, and if you can look here into some of my library, you can have a look there and see what's happening there and my little guitar down there and my little cheetahs from Africa hidden down there. But I don't know if you can see them all. But hope you're not dizzy by now. But anyway, many of you are in lockdown, as we spoke about last time. Many are living in a sense of containment and restrainment and restriction. Many are living in quarantine. Over three billion people are living something that they've never had to do before. And I want to say this. That in this period of time, this is but a pause button for a surge that is coming. I call it miracle momentum. Like everything else on earth, the impetus always creates momentum. And once you have impetus, momentum manifests and it becomes very difficult to stop. This pause is not to stop momentum. This pause is a time of gathering ourselves for something very soon that's going to be released. When we came into 2020, we were coming into a year like no other year that has ever been on the planet before. This was a year that we're coming into now where all new things are going to happen. New ideas, nothing to be afraid of about the new. The new is going to be so creative and innovative and it's going to do things, God's going to do things we haven't seen before. And we can try the old ways and the old patterns, but they're not going to work. This is a prototype time that God wants to maximize and manifest across all of the earth in these days. So the, the real issue right now is do not let the reality that surrounds you reduce your dream down to that reality. Do not degrade your dream that God has given you, the vision that God has given you to accommodate the limitation of the reality that currently and temporarily surrounds you because there is a miracle momentum about to be manifested across the earth and people will be changed in a day by the supernatural power of God. The world has had enough of an intellectual gospel. They've had enough of academic, religious, cerebral Christianity and religion. They've had enough of legalism. And this time is for signs and wonders. The time is for supernatural financial breakthroughs and finances coming by the blessing of God. The world needs to see the economic system of the kingdom of heaven. And it's a time not, again, to reduce your dream or downgrade your dream to fit into your current reality. But God wants to upgrade your reality into the fullness of the bigness of the dream he had for you and me before time began. I hope you can say amen. Yes, this is an expanding anointing that is upon the church. It's expansive. It's a miracle <laughs> momentum. And the church needs to manifest in a new way, in a greater intensity, a deliverance from passivity, a deliverance from accommodating our lifestyles to fit in to the Mr. Average, to fear, to limitation on containment. The Lord is summoning us to ever expanding horizons of favor, fruitfulness and influence and fruitfulness. It doesn't matter how you've lived in the past. It doesn't matter the restrictions you've put up with. I tell you this, that some of us have lived in restrictions and containment because it benefited others 
who had ulter ulterior motives and agendas to keep us contained and restrained in limitation. And they brought frustration on people's lives. They brought frustration on our lives. And the Lord says, I call you to break out of that and to be bold and to move forward into the fresh things that I'm doing. So the anointing is what lubricates and liberates us. The anointing is supernatural. It's amazing to me that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, John writes and he says, you have an anointing and you know all things. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Everything you need to know supernaturally, you have an anointing already that abides on you and remains on you. It is not counterfeit. It teaches you. You do not need any man to teach you for the anointing on the inside of you. It teaches you to know all things you need to know. Now, that doesn't disqualify Ephesians for gifts of teachers and prophets and apostles, pastors and evangelists. Of course, the anointing uses men to teach and women to teach. But the anointing in you will always see and discern the counterfeit. It will see when someone's teaching and they're not teaching by the anointing of God, but they're teaching by the spirit of this world. The anointing in you will warn you and show you that they don't need to teach you. You need to listen to anointed people by the spirit of God and you can know all things by the spirit of God that you need to know. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and he starts in there and he starts saying around verse 9 he says that no ear has heard no eye has seen and no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him praise God the next verse he says for the spirit that's the anointing that by which you know all things he says for the spirit of God searches all things. The spirit of the living God is searching all things in the natural world. He searches all things, even the deep things of God. For you have not received the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, that you may know the things that God has freely given to you. This is a time where God's going to make a distinction between those who mock the people of the Holy Spirit and those who mock the supernatural because they're mere natural men. They move by mere natural humanistic instincts. They really are unbelievers dressed up trying to pretend to be believers. But the Lord is saying those who are believers, signs will follow them that believe. And you can see whether someone is a believer or an unbeliever, not by what they say they believe, but by what authentic signs are following them. The miraculous, the supernatural is upon the church in this hour. And it's time for us to run in the fire and from a place of rest, but to run in the fire of God by the power of the anointing. So I want to say this, and my phone is ringing. And I will just quickly change it. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I want to say this. Miracles and momentum. <laughs> Once miracles get into momentum, they begin to sequence off each other supernaturally. And it doesn't matter how ordinary you think you are. You become extraordinary by the miraculous power of God. And you begin to create an impetus by the Spirit of miracle momentum and it becomes easier and easier and easier you might be frustrated with containment you might have stepped out and tried and it didn't work but i tell you we're in a new season now and there's a miracle momentum that has been released right now i say again you may feel frustrated and contained by this short-term shutdown but i can tell you the world has been prepared for miracle momentum do not see this shutdown as a time of just doing nothing it is a time where god is speeding up the activity on the inside of your spirit and we're getting ready to step out to come out of containment and step into this world with a miracle momentum even in a small way i can tell you from things in my past just a sequence of the supernatural I remember being called, Glenda and I, to go to Reading, not Reading in California, but Reading in, in London, just outside of London. And men and women that we know well set up the meetings. But I remember training people in the morning on how to step out in the supernatural. And there was such a hunger. A hundred people took time off work to come and be the ministry team, to be the miracle team. And so every morning for a week, I trained them and ministered to them and impart the anointing to them. And 
one morning I actually told them about all the failures I've ever had, all the people I prayed for that died, all the mistakes, all the things that made me look useless. And, and, and I thought I'm going to let them know because all they hear of is the miracles God's used uh, in my life. And I, they need to know about the failures that, that I lived through a period of time where I thought I'm not going to reduce the word of God down to the level of my experience, but I'm going to be faithful and continue with perseverance and faith until the, 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 the promises of the Word of God uh, are, are, are that my goal and that my experience gets raised up to the level of the promises of God's Word. And we haven't even seen a partial fulfillment of the promises of the new covenant, which are all yes in Christ Jesus. And we say amen to the promises through Christ Jesus, and that glorifies God. And I tell you this, that as I told them about my failures and I was transparent, they, they, their faith rose rose and rose and the power of God hit that place. And I remember going out that afternoon to pray for the evening meeting and shaking under the power of God and realizing something awesome is going to happen. And that night, after me having admitted my failures in the morning, that night, a woman with multiple advanced MS, so far advanced, the doctors gave her very little time to live, a, an English lady. And uh, she she was right at the back, and I felt the spirit of faith, and Glenda and I went, and we prayed for her. And she felt in her body for the first time in years, miraculous power going through her legs because MS shuts down all feelings. It paralyzes you and it bends your body and destroys your dignity and kills you. And doctors had said, she's got no hope. She's going to die. And, uh, contained in a wheelchair and the power of God came out of it on her and within a few minutes she was out of that wheelchair and walking rapidly around a big auditorium with British people standing their feet shouting and clapping and at, when she got back to her husband she told me that a young man had pushed her into a swimming pool many, many years before and had broken something in her neck and all of her problems had begun and that she had carried bitterness in her heart to this young man. And I said to her, lady, uh, isn't that amazing? Did you forgive that young man? Because I knew she hadn't. And she said, no, I didn't. I've been bitter with him right up to this day. So I said, Jesus healed you from an incurable disease while you still had bitterness in your heart. And she said, that's right. I said, that's the mercy of God. That's how the power of God flows through the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. And she, and I, I said to her then, so lady, do you forgive that young man now? And she said, of course. You see, the miraculous changes people's lives. And I said to her, well, you, you put your husband in that wheelchair and you wheel him out of this room, which she did to a standing ovation. Now, that was a miracle. And so many people got saved that night. And the ministry team just went into overdrive and incurable diseases were healed. And the next number of nights, we just saw more and more people get saved and miracles in London, England. The power of God was being made manifested. Now, just a few months later, he has, he has the miracle momentum. I'm back in, I'm in Holland and I'm talking to 700 leaders from across all north of, of Europe. And they're all there together. And I'm, I go into the forest to pray and I hear the Spirit of God say, that's what you saw, miracle momentum. If you believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you declare that over yourself, I will cause angels, healing angels, miracle angels to come around you and whisper into your ears words of knowledge and you will see miracle momentum. That which you saw in, in, in Reading, London, you'll see again exactly even the increase. And in those meetings, the power of God hit that place again so powerfully that literal metal in people's bodies disappeared. People who couldn't move because they were stuck, they could move and all kinds. Not, it wasn't just the amount of miracles because there were so many miracles and momentum, but there were mighty miracles. There were significant miracles. There was the working of miracles, not just healing, the working of miracles. And then I'd seen a lady, a Dutch lady, uh, in her wheelchair being pushed around by her husband for three days of the conference. And she heard me talk about the lady that came out the wheelchair in uh, Reading, London. And so on the last night, or the, yeah, the last night, we still had a more, one more morning meeting the next day. On the last night, at the end of the meeting, everyone was 
sitting. And I said, let's just stand and lift our hands and worship Jesus. When I said that, that lady had been in a wheelchair for, for, for such a long time that we'd seen her husband push her around every day for three or four days. As I said, let's everyone stand and worship God. She suddenly felt, felt the power of God come upon her and she stood up for the first time in years. She stood up and began to worship God. Then she ran down the aisle and I said to her, lady, put your husband in the wheelchair and push him out this building and standing ovation again. Miracles in momentum and impetus multiplying to the place where you begin to feel this is unstoppable. Now, friends, the enemy is trying to stop miracle momentum, but it is coming and it is upon us now. I'm standing in a place of revelation and miraculous power to let you know, don't you stay stuck because don't you fit the limitations of your current reality as your final resting place. Don't you fit or downgrade your dream that God has given you in visions and the night hours and in prophetic words and revelation and raiment, reading the word. There's times where you experience God at high levels. Those high levels will be the low levels that are about in the very near future. Don't get, don't withdrew, reduce your dream into the limitations of your current reality. Do not do that, says the Spirit of God, for it is time to see the supernatural. And I'll tell you the last sequence in that whole uh, uh, unfolding momentum was uh, in September this last year. Glenda and I were in South Africa and we were at a time of uh, many uh, numbers of leaders that gathered together and we were uh, uh, we were experiencing on that last day the power of God coming upon us and at the end of that meeting I went up a couple came up to me and they said this is awesome <laughs> this is amazing this is what we came for to experience this tangible presence of God here and so she was from Holland and he is a farmer in Zululand and they had been married and had been living in Holland and they were so excited because they said to me, they'd driven all the way down from Zululand to be at this meeting and they said to me, we were in that, we were in Holland when you had that meeting, when that lady came out the wheelchair and all those miracles happened. But they said to me, but you see, we were in the children's church. And we were looking after all of these leaders' children. And, uh, and I said, oh, no. So you missed what happened in the meetings. And they said to me, no, no, we didn't miss what happened in the meetings. Because you see, when the glory of God fell on the meetings that were far away, we were meeting in, a, in, 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 in another uh, building on the same plot of land, but in another place from where you were having those meetings. And we had all of these many children. And when, in, when, when, those, when the glory fell in the meetings in another part of the building, they said, suddenly the air changed in the room. Suddenly the air particles began to move and we could feel this invisible, invincible, tangible glory, substance and essence and presence of the glory right in the room with us. You can feel it where you are right now as I'm speaking. And they said, suddenly the children began to fall under the power of God. Suddenly the children began to prophesy supernaturally. And it went on and on. And they were trying to close their hands. And they, the power of God was so strong, they couldn't get their hands together. And the hands would just open up again. And, the, and they were, there was the supernatural then. And then the parents came eventually to fetch the children. As the parents came through the door, they began to weep and cry or drop to their knees or go and hug their children. And, and they, and the power, and they were just so excited. This Dutch lady and this, and her, her South African husband, uh, got a church there in Zululand. But they were so excited to see this power falling in this leadership gathering in South Africa in September last year. And I want to say to you that all of these things, and we'll, I'll talk to you more about how faith operates and these kind of things. You might be surprised how different my view on how faith operates is. And maybe I'll do that in the next teaching. So I'm bringing this to an end right now. But I'm saying to you, there, there has not been false starts 
in, in our history, in the history of the church. There have been starts that were true and authentic, and they were meant to go on with ever-increasing glory. But you see, unfaithfulness to the true gospel, and moving back under law and rules and politics, and people that benefit by the brokenness of the church, people that have got hidden agendas to keep God's people under control, they stopped an authentic move of God. But God has had enough. He's actually ticked off. He's quite miffed about this constant interruption, the, 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 gen, the Galatian scenario again and again. Paul says you were moving in the Holy Spirit. You had signs and wonders and great miracles. But now you've gone back to the doing of the law and the supply of the Spirit and the power of miracles has stopped. Listen, the supply of the Spirit and the glory is not a seasonal thing. It will flow the moment we are clear about what happened at the cross and the church believes it. Most of the church believes it. If you can get enough people, and I'll talk about how faith operates uh, next time, I think, you will see there's an unstoppable, invincible move of God that's coming because there's enough people on this earth that are frustrated and fed up and had enough of the spirit of religious control and politics in the church. They're tired of false unity movements that actually just level everyone down to the lowest common denominator. They want the apostolic. They want to see the kingdom of heaven rise up. Doesn't mean we need to be mean. Doesn't mean to mean that we've got to be unkind to people that try to control. But it does mean that we need to be faithful to the Most High God and live with eternity in our heart and get ready. God is about to shake nations in the glory of God. The most spectacular spread across the nations is not coronavirus. It's going to be the authentic gospel coming in a demonstration of power, full of love and releasing and liberating people in miracle momentum. Divine initiative and impetus is being released. Do not be in any way distracted by this clo closed lockdown period where we need to just deal with this virus and get it, where God will deal with it. But just be ready because it's up. God's about to announce from heaven the release of miracle momentum and divine impetus. Start preparing now in whatever days you've got left to be staying at home or in some ways uh, your lifestyle has had to change because of this virus. Don't see this time as a waste of time. Don't just use it to, to waste your time. Use it as a time to get yourself in a predisposition, in a readiness <laughs> for the flow of the supernatural. Great adventures are ahead of us. Let's not be afraid. Let the courage of God fill you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare miracle, momentum, impetus, be initiated and activated and imparted to all my brothers and sisters in any place in the world they are. Let them see themselves as the ambassadors of the highest government of the universe and that they are authorized to produce miracle momentum. No matter how many failures they've had in the past, no matter how many setbacks, God, you've been, these setbacks have been turning out to be a setup for supernatural strategy, for God to touch the nations of the earth by the power of the gospel supernaturally. Hey, 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 hey. Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Spirit of God's coming on you. Spirit of the Lord is touching you in a tangible way. You can feel the electrical currents of God on you right now. This is not hypnosis. This is not self-induced delusion. This is the authentic anointing of God. Get used to it because it's going to increase much, much more. Now you've got no music in the background. I've got no music in the background. Maybe next time I'll put some music in the background. But this is just dry. This is just just me and a camera and you sitting somewhere. And I'm saying to you, I'm reaching through this camera with my eyes to you and saying, you are chosen. You are called and appointed and authorized to be part of this move. Stand up strong. Be bold. The anointing of God is upon you. Some of you are shaking under that anointing right now. Some of you are weeping. Some of you are being touched. This is an equipping, commissioning activation coming to you right now, supernaturally through these lenses from Hong Kong. But it's coming from heaven upon you in Jesus' name.